Either kill me or take me as I am, because I'll be damned if I ever change. My manner of thinking, so you say, cannot be approved. Do you suppose I care? A poor fool indeed is he who adopts a manner of thinking for others. In order to know virtue, we must first acquaint ourselves with vice. It is only by way of pain, one arrives at pleasure. Fuck! Is one expected to be a gentleman when one is stiff? We are no guiltier in following the primitive impulses that govern us than is the Nile for her floods, or the sea for her waves. Sexual pleasure is, I agree, a passion to which all others are subordinate but in which they all unite. If it is the dirty element that gives pleasure to the act of lust, then the dirtier it is, the more pleasurable it is bound to be. To judge from the notions expounded by theologians, one must conclude that God created most men simply, with a view to crowding hell. What does one want, when one is engaged in the sexual act? That everything around you give you its utter attention, think only of you, care only for you, every man wants to be a tyrant when he fornicates. Certain souls may seem harsh to others, but it is just a way, benounced only to them, of caring and feeling more deeply. The man who alters his way of thinking, to suit others is a fool. There is no God, nature sufficeth unto herself, in no wise hath she need of an author. Lust is to the other passions, what the nervous fluid is to life, it supports them all, lends strength to them all ambition, cruelty, avarice, revenge, are all founded on lust. Social order at the expense of liberty, is hardly a bargain. Sex without pain, is like food without taste. I want to be the victim of his errors. Your body is the church, where nature asks to be reverenced. All universal moral principles are idle fancies. The only way to a woman's heart, is along the path of torment. It is not my mode of thought, that has caused my misfortunes, but the mode of thought of others. What we are doing here, is only the image of what we would like to do. Sex is as important as eating or drinking, and we ought to allow the one appetite to be satisfied with as little restraint, or false modesty as the other. My passions, concentrated on a single point, resemble the rays of a sun assembled by a magnifying glass, they immediately set fire to whatever object they find in their way. I don't know what the heart is, not I, I only use the word to denote the mind's frailties. Religions are the cradles of despotism. The reasoning man who scorns the prejudices of simpletons necessarily, becomes the enemy of simpletons, he must expect as much, and laugh at the inevitable. Destruction, hence, like creation, is one of nature's mandates. True happiness lies in the senses, and virtue gratifies none of them. One must do violence to the object of one's desire. When it surrenders, the pleasure is greater. Happiness is an abstraction, it is a product of the imagination, it is a way of being moved, 
which depends entirely on our way of seeing and feeling. Can we become other than what we are? Let us give ourselves indiscriminately to everything our passions suggest, and we will always be happy. Conscience is not the voice of nature but only the voice of prejudice. I've already told you, the only way to a woman's heart is along the path of torment. I know none other as sure. Nature has endowed each of us with a capacity for kindly feelings, let us not squander them on others. In order to know virtue, we must acquaint ourselves with vice. Only then can we know the true measure of a man. It is always by way of pain, one arrives at pleasure. Nothing quite encourages as does one's first unpunished crime. Variety, multiplicity are the two most powerful vehicles of lust. One has always had too much, when one has had enough. The completest submissiveness is your lot, and that is all. Truth titillates the imagination far less than fiction. I assume that everything must yield to me, that the entire universe had to flatter my whims, and that I had the right to satisfy them at will. Madam, I have become a whore through goodwill and libertine through virtue. Crime is to the passions, what nervous fluid is to life, it sustains them, it supplies their strength. My vengeance needs blood. Fear not less precautions and protective contrivances diminish your pleasure, mystery only adds thereto. I wish to stifle the unhappy passion, which burned in my soul. But is love an illness to be cured? All I endeavored to oppose to it merely fanned its flames. The impossibility of outraging nature is the greatest anguish man can know. It is only by imitating the vices of others that I have earned my misfortunes. Oh. My friend, never seek to corrupt the person whom you love, it can go further than you think. The greatest pleasures are born of conquered repugnancies. Not my manner of thinking, but the manner of thinking of others, has been the source of my unhappiness. The state of a moral man, is one of tranquility and peace. The state of an immoral man is one of perpetual unrest. Self-interest lies behind all that men do, forming the important motive for all their actions. This rule has never deceived me. A little less vice is virtuousness in a very vicious heart. To lie is always a necessity for women, Above all when they choose to deceive, falsehood becomes vital to them. Women are not made for one single man, ties for men at large nature created them. I suggest somewhere, that anyone who wishes to write and has no aptitude for it would be better off making shoes for ladies and boots for men. This monster was outfitted with faculties, so gigantic that even the broadest thoroughfares, would still have appeared too narrow for him. One would have to lose one's wits to believe in a god, and to become a complete imbecile to adore him. It has pleased nature so to make us that we attain happiness only by way of pain. I would, Thank God, watch the universe perish without shedding a tear.
There is no rational commensuration between what affects us and what affects others. The first we sense physically, the other only touches us morally. A man learns nothing when he talks, he learns by listening. Which is why those who talk the most are, in the ordinary run of things, fools. Crime causes so much horror, even to them, that they would like, in order to escape from the necessity they feel to be bad, to be believed and always to be depicted as virtuous. You have no idea, my friend, of the effect of a young woman's tears on all these weak and timid souls. That man cannot do without the absurd idea of an afterlife, is a peculiar mania of mankind. To combine incest, adultery, sodomy and sacrilege, he buggers his married daughter with a host. He cuts off a young boy's four limbs, buggers the torso, feeds him well and so keeps him alive, as the limbs were not cut off too close to the torso, he lives for a long time, he buggers him thus for more than a year. In a society full of vice, virtue will never be useful. That same evening Michette, having eaten a great deal, is suspended by her feet until she has vomited all of it over Kerval, who frigs himself beneath her and swallows. For the state is everything here. It nourishes the citizen, raises his children, cares for him, judges and condemns him, and of this state I am merely the first citizen. We owe more to habit than to nature, my friend. The latter creates us, the other shapes us. Nothing is as encouraging as a first crime that goes unpunished. It is very easy not to like what you do not know, but no one should be allowed not to want to know what is made to be liked very much indeed. Evil acts make me hard. I find an evil a charm piquant enough to awaken every sensation of pleasure in me, and I give myself to evil for evil alone, and without any other interest than evil alone. One can be, in a word, virtuous in thought, character, and temperament, without being obliged to adopt a thousand absurd systems that have nothing to do with virtue. Fortunate moments of quiet happiness, where are they? Nowhere to be seen. He buggers him, and during this act of sodomy he opens the skull, removes the brain and replaces it with molten lead. He ravished the honor of the woman he had just shorn of life. 